Jorge is about to join us. He is a bilingual Puerto Rico based stylist. He's also a salon owner of Hair Lab Studio 407. And he is a Sambia ambassador, Redkin artist. He's so passionate about design, color, and finishing. So today is going to be just an all immersive haircutting class. So without further ado, let's welcome Jorge Perez. Hey, Katie, what's up? What's good? I'm doing so good. Thank you for joining us. I am so excited to watch you teach this look. So let's have you do some design. Yeah, let's do that design. Let's get to it. Hi, guys. Hope everybody's doing so, so well. Um, hope you're having fun today. And thank you for being here and taking that time to just share a little while and learn something new. So let's get to it. Okay, so today we're working with the short shag. And I want to just to show you a little bit of the sectioning. So I'm just gonna turn it around a bit. As you can see right up in the front, here is a triangle section. Let me loosen this up so I can share it with you. There you can see a triangle section right in the front. Let me adjust this back again. Then we have kind of like a, it could, could be called like a zigzag section, but it actually isn't. So we're going from the recession area going down, then going back up. Then we turn it to the back and we have a huge V section and repeats the same thing on the other side. Now, one more thing I just want to show you on top. Uh, let me loosen this up. Let me take her out. See, there's a section right here, two individual sections on the top. Let me connect this back again. I just wanted to show you a roadmap of how we'll be working on today this cut. So what I'll be start is we're gonna start from a different way. Like, like I know you guys, we have to start from different directions and different points. So let's do something new and fun, okay? So this cut, we're gonna start in the fringe, okay? So some call it fringe, some call it bangs, and where I'm from, we call it flequillos o pollina. Because you know I'm from Puerto Rico, I'm gonna rock my land every day, all day. So, okay, here's our center section. We're gonna start with, uh, profile section right in the center. So I'm just going to start right here. Comb this out of the way because this here, I won't be touching it. Let me gather it all together. Let me clean this up for you. So I won't be cutting this session. Like I say, in all of my classes, this is what the hair that won't be cutting. Let's just keep it out of the way. Second section. Remove this one here. And I'm just going to place it here. So we'll be starting with this section right at the center. If I pull it together and clean it up very well, you see it's not too wide. It's approximately the same width of my comb. As you can see, let me switch combs for a minute so you can see better. Got my own white comb. As you can see, it's almost the size of that section. So the fringe area, I'm going to work in an uncomfortable position, but I just want to do it for you guys so you can see better. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to ask for a favor. Come in close. Can you share this for us? Come on, click that share button. What you get for free, give it for free. Show the love. Okay, so here I'm just going to be starting right where my fingers will be placed right at the bridge of the nose. That means I'm going to use my wide side of the comb. I'm going to comb straight, place my fingers right into the bridge of the nose and i'm going to point cut so that means i'm going to like give it that point cut not make it perfect just make it seamlessly equal so i'm just point cutting all through giving a little extra chops just to make that softness there okay so there we go can i go higher you might ask yes you can so i'm going to go a little bit higher put my nose where I um, at the bridge of the nose, come back again, make it a little shorter. I want to make it fun for you guys. So here we go. As you see, I'm point cutting and I'm using, like I always say, my favorite shear, my Sanvilla, Sanvilla seven inch dry cutting classic design. Uh, there we go. I love this shear. I'm so in love with it. So let's get these hair out of her nose. You know, you don't want her sneezing or anything. Now we're going to take our Second section, the one that causes the fringe, and we're going to stand across. That means your body will be 
placed on the opposite side of the section. That means if I'm holding here, my body position will be here. What will this will do? Let me grab it all together. As I gather all the hair, I will make that, that section over direct from one side to the other, and I'm just increasing the length to that side. So let me gather it all together. Now I'm gonna change body position. Let me change right here so you guys can see better when, I, when I'm cutting. There we go. So I'm just gonna be slicing. So I'm gonna put my, my shear right on top of my fingers. I'm just gonna like right there, creating that movement. Putting, making sure that the shear, let me roll with this, putting the shear on top of my finger before I close. That means I'm coming in and I'm closing and I'm closing while I'm cutting. This will help me create peaks and valleys and have that softness to it. So I'm gonna have it here, put my finger on top and I'm cutting. As you can see, I'm slicing it out bring over directing that section to the center so I can cut it right here. Now when I got it, I check, I just style it the way I want to. As you can see, I always like to recommend and I hope you guys do it too. This is a very good tool. When you're cutting, always after you do the cut, set the hair where you want it to be or where the hair you want it to be styled. That way you have a more visual, um, a visual finish. You know where you're headed. You need to, you would know if you need to cut more or less. I hope this works for you. Let me see in the chat box where you guys are from. I want to see, let me know where you guys are from. Cannot see. Oh, okay. So I'm going to do lucky for you. I'm going to be doing the opposite side. So as you can see, I have the opposite side and I'm standing right across again. Have the middle of this fringe gathered up. I'm gonna elevate it 45 degrees to the base, but my finger angle will be at 90. That means, ah, let me gather it again. Here we go. Let me shift it to the side so you guys can see better. I have the, the hair on a 45 degree angle, but my finger, my hand is at a 90. Can you guys get that? Okay. I see Canada up in here. I see the BX up in there. Kenya is there. What's up to Shy? Couple of cities. I love you guys. Philly's there. Okay. So I'm going to do it again. Now I'm going to cut. Let me. There we go. I'm over directing the section to the center. Let me flip it again so you guys can see it. I'm going behind it so you guys can see it better. What's up, Dubai? What's up, Cali? There we go. So I'm coming again, putting my shear on top of my fingers. So I won't, you know, I don't want to see no special effects. I know it's Halloween, but I don't want to see no fingers flying in the camera. So there we go. I'm just slicing it out. So there's a point where you can't go under. So you gather again the hair, put it at the position you want, and you just keep releasing, cutting to the point where you're happy. Okay, so after you do that, sometimes one side could come up easier and the other side could come a little bit harder. So what do I like to do? What's up, Ohio? So what I like to do is after I do that, I come in and I point cut a bit just to create that softness that I want. So here you go, I'm cutting it off, making sure that blend is in there. Make it fall. I'm just given that design, let me show you what it looks like from the front. There we go. How does that look? So it's coming to be. Okay, what's up, Florida? Okay, so now I'm just taking off the top sections. I'm going to bring a little section, just the one to the center right here. I'm going to flip it again. Hope you guys can see there better. You guys loving it? Okay, 
So we're going to take a small section where we previous cut, where we previously cut it. So I have it here, and I'm going to over direct that section. This is going very short because it's a short shag. <laughs> so I'm coming here to this position. As you can see, I'm over directing the hair, but my finger angle. What angle is my finger angle? Write it at the chat. My finger angle is at what position? Let me see it at the chat. It's at 90 degrees. So here we go. I got it right here. And we're going to continue slicing it down. Now we have a center section. We started here at the center. Now we're, I'm going to flip it again to this side. And I'm going to start making small sections, small subsections from this set, from the previous section. There we go. So I divide it here, take the hair that I previously cut it, that the one that's on my guide. There you guys, can you guys see everything good? Let me see. Have it at 45 degree angle. The hair is over directed forward and I'm gonna start cutting it off. Sometimes people ask me, does it have to be picture perfect? No, why? It doesn't have to be a perfect, strong, bold cut because we want to have texture. So we want to have that playfulness and that movement. So if, if it doesn't come evenly perfect, it's okay. That's what you're trying to create. That's why we're slicing. Got that section. Now I over direct the, the rest or the remaining of the section, over direct it forward finger angle at 90 degrees, and we slice. There we go. Bring it again, gather all that. One important thing is standing on the opposite side of what you're cutting. Why? It's easier to pull towards you than to push away. What I mean by pushing away, let me stand right here. If I'm pulling by muscle memory, if I pull the hair towards me, I will know where to stop. But if I stand on the same side of the section, that means I'm standing on this side and I'm cutting, it's, it's easier for me to keep pushing away and I will change that angle because I'm pushing away. That's why one of the things that we guys we should do is stand on the opposite side of our section. So I'm gathering everything again. Here we go. Let me flip it so you guys can see better. I got it right here. And we slice cut right there. Make that hair fall. Now we're flipping sides. That means if we're flipping sides, where do I have to stand? Let me change it here. If I'm right here, Okay, I see if someone wants volume on the top, can you do that technique? Yes, you may. Yes, you may, but I'm going to show you a little, little, little trick so you can enhance it and to create volume. Our last class that I shared with you, I shared a very cool technique that if you want to create that pop and that volume on top. So if we're cutting this side now, and this is my right side, what, where should I stand? Where should my body be standing? Write it on the chat. If I'm cutting the right side, where should my body be standing when we're cutting? You see it at the chat? On the opposite thank God side. Thank you for that answer, guys. So I'm standing on the opposite side. Why I stand on the opposite side? Let me flip it, stand right here. I stand on the opposite side so I could pull, not push away. Come again through. Cut that away. Take the remainder of the section, section right here. Gather it again, 90 degrees, my finger position finger angle but the hair will be at 45. i come again so some of you might be asking okay if i am cutting 
the section, you're going to make the cut, not with the point of the scissor, but actually where the strongest cut will be, will be closest to the end. So that means, let me get this in a little bit tighter, closer in. I want you guys to really get this very well. I'm not trying to knock down my computer, but... Okay, so I have it at a 45 degree angle. I brought my section. Very important to maintain, gather all that hair, maintain it clean. Okay, when you're cutting, let me see if I can put it this way. See where my shear went all the way to? My shear is not at the point, it's almost close to the end. So what I'm cutting is actually with the strongest part or the strongest cut that I can get from my shear. I pull it again, make sure I point cut if there's anything that I want to erase or enhance. And let me see, put it in forward so you guys can see. You can see how lightly and all that texture is coming in. Let me push it a little bit back. See all that airiness that's there? So yes, you can create volume, but wait in a minute, I'll share with you how to make this pop a little bit high, okay? With me? Thumbs up or show me some hearts so I know you guys are still there with me. So I already worked the top. Now we're working with our back section. The base isn't at 90. Okay. The base is at 45. It was my bad. My finger angle was at 90. I'm sorry, guys. That confused there for a minute. Okay, so I'm letting loose all the back. All this hair is going off. Hope you guys are excited. So let me push back. And I'm going to work the same way I started the section in the front. We're going to start right at the middle. So here, all this hair that I have right here, I'm going to take it to the side because why? We're not cutting it, so we don't need it in our way. Take our second section, separate it, so we have a center section. If we're not cutting it, like I always like to say, let's keep it out of the way. I'm going to put it sideways. Take this section, this central section that I have. Let me show you again. See the center section right there? Moved. There we go. So our center section, let me work it a little bit better. There we go. Our center section right here is going to, we we're going to over direct it. Let me stand right here. Over direct it. Grab a piece of the hair that we previously cut it. Hope you guys can see there well. So make sure all the strands and the grains are right aligned to one to another. So when I have the position, I over direct it, try to find my guideline. There we go, there's my guideline and I'm gonna repeat the same cut. I'm gonna continue slicing it off, over directing that piece of hair. Come again, make sure I got it all together. Want to make a, be a better blend? I point cut. Make sure everything is good. Now, what we're going to do with the section that we have on the opposite side is all this hair, we're going to gather it together to the one that we took to the center. Make sure all that hair is moving to the right direction. There we go. And we're going to repeat the same movement. We're going to continue slicing it out. There we go. Now when you watch it fall, see all the texture that it's popping out? See that little volume that's coming too? You guys loving that? Show me show some love. If you show me some love, I'll be happy and we'll continue sharing. Now we're coming to the opposite side. So what do I like to do? Hope you guys get this too. We're standing on the opposite. I wish, how many of you guys would love, like if we could do this to clients, we don't have to move just... That would be fun, but maybe it's just me. Okay, so we got the hair again. Make sure everything is in position. Right? Got a little piece of hair that came out. Okay, 
Now we're elevating, we're over directing, we're over directing. See my guideline right here. I know you can see it right in the bottom. But we're gonna over direct that hair right to where we want and we're gonna slice it out. So you almost, I cut my finger off, but I didn't. Grab again, gather this hair again, pull it together. There we go. Gather it, over direct it. My finger angle is at 90. And I keep slicing that hair off. Now, take this piece of strand right here. Take this piece of hair, uh, this clip away, using my Sambila dry clips. Gather all that hair to the side. Comb it all the way up vertically straight on top. And when we got that, we're going to over direct it 90. So see all those hairs that are away from, that are longer in my fingers, those are the ones that we're cutting away. Let me get a little bit, so there we go. If you want to make sure that you got everything, always make sure you're pushing and you're gathering the hair to the point where you want it to be. If you feel a little uncomfortable, point cut it a bit, let it go, set it up a bit, how it falls. Estupendo corte. Gracias y muchas gracias por compartirlo. Gracias a ti por estar aquí compartiendo con nosotros. Espero que continúes dándome tus preguntas. Tu nombre es Valeria. Espero que disfrutes mucho de esto. Estoy compartiendo pues mis conocimientos con ustedes y te agradecería un montón. Número uno, que me digas de dónde eres. Y número dos, bien importante, comparte este video con tus amistades. Enséñale que estás aprendiendo para ser una mejor estilista. Okay, how do you know? I always say, I'm always going to give love to my Spanish people. Okay, so as you can see, all the volume and all that texture that's popping up. Okay, now, as you, let me comb this away. Comb this away, and you saw the sections that we started. So this is the length that we have right here, right? I'm just gonna comb what I already cut to the side. So like what you already cut, you won't mess it up. This is what I'm gonna show one technique in one side and I'm gonna show one technique on the other side, okay? So you could use whatever works better for you. If this was a lot of dense hair, this mannequin that doesn't have that density. So I'm just gonna show it to you for purposes of education. Saludo Chile. So I made a braid, a three strand braid, very simple. I'm gonna let go of my comb, but I'm gonna elevate it at 45 degrees. I want to add texture and movement. So I'm going right in the braid. And I'm, as you can see with the end of my shear, I'm just going in and just giving that cut. I'm not closing my shears completely. I'm just like doing a Pac-Man cut, as you can see. There we go. Now, when we loosen this up, you can see that texture that flows in the hair. If the hair is very dense, go ahead, do your thing. If it's fine hair, be careful, okay? After you do that, I'm going to flip it to the side, grab that piece that I cut with my main section, elevate it again at 45 degrees, and I'm going to slice away. Elevate it at 45, bring it all together. But I want to, I first showed you the texture because now let me flip it to this side. And there we start seeing how it's rocking it out. You already see the texture coming through. Are you guys liking it? Tanya, I really try to. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to show you the same thing. This time, I'm going to 
before I do the texture on the opposite side that I was mentioning, I'm going to uh, flip it to the side, elevate it, and uh, I got a little tangled here. I'm using the camera as a mirror. There we go. So I elevate it. See those strands right there? Boom, 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 boom. I'm done working with the front side of the cut. Let me flip it where you guys could see it. See, it's how it's coming out. Okay, now we're gonna work with the back. Okay, I thought I had more clips at the back. Okay, so I'm gonna comb it through, make sure so I can see if I need to cut and make a more clear definition of what I want. I'm combing it through. There you see that flip coming out. How are you guys feeling that? Hey, Manda, what's up? That's my friend. Most importantly, you guys have to follow Manda Z. Manda Siegerman, follow her on Instagram. She's a crazy rock and roll cutter. And also, she's an amazing colorist. So you got to follow her on Instagram. Like, well, after the class, not now, after the class. Okay. So I'm combing it all the way back and I'm doing a center section. I'm elevating the hair and I'm going to just bring my shear and I'm going to slice it out. Come again, the second section. This doesn't have to be beautifully done. Come again, come with my shear again. Check this texture. Check if you're always, after you cut, go back and see what are you doing? Are you seeing what you're, like, you can see what you're creating? Do you, are you loving it? Are the design, your client is loving it? These are things that are very important while we're cutting because while we're creating, you have to see if you want to enhance or you want to um, make these certain points pop out where you want to be, I need a little bit more texture. I need this hair to be a little bit more fun. I need this to be a little bit, I'm sure. Okay, there's a question. ¿Cuál es el nombre de este corte? La parte de arriba superior aquí. Creo que aquí que lo dice. El, un shot corto. Okay? So, as you can see, I'm popping out that texture. One thing I always like to say, don't finish with one tool when you have many tools to make your work go easier. So one of the things that I really enjoy and I like to play with, High Colorado, is my San Vila razor, as you can see. So one thing I like, let me uh, move this to this area. I want to share with this, you guys, just if you want to create a little bit more of texture. So I'm taking this out of the way. I did it with my shear, but I'm going to show you an extra tip to create a little more internal um, internal texture. So I like to elevate the hair, like we're still elevating 90 degrees off the base, gather that hair all together. And I like to come in, in diagonal sections. That means I'm cutting long strokes, but diagonal, like it had a 45 degree angle. That means I, I in this section, I'm gonna divide it in three. It'd be one, two, three. So I'm coming where it starts the number one coming in and I cut it out. Let go of that, come in from the middle, cut it out. Come again, the top section, come in, there we go. Now when you create those short hairs that we cut in the beginning, short hair that's closest to the scalp is stronger than the long ones. That means this hair as you can see, it's pushing outward the hair. So it's creating that extra volume. It's creating that extra pieciness, that little strength to make the hair go pop and make it bigger. So I like to do it in the set in the sections that we work that, that actually make the length to make that, that little pizzazz, like I like to call it. So I let go, quick second, take my second section hold the 
hair that I am not cutting. I'm going to slightly over direct the section to my previous section. That means I'm not I'm not going to stand it where the hair lives. I'm going to over direct it to my previous section. Let go of this piece. How many sections will I divide it? Write it in the chat. How many sections I'm going to divide it? Could you write it? Thanks. Thanks, Koki. I like it too. Okay, so I'm over directing. So I'm using how many sections where I'm going to cut? I'm going to divide it in three. Thanks, Koki. Three. Good. So I'm cutting in what angle? What angle? Write it in the chat. What angle? I'm going from long to short in a diagonal section. So that means I go to the bottom. I release it, take that hair out, and I make it pop. This is an awesome cut, guys. When you want to teach your clients to wear their natural texture, this is an awesome cut to work with. So I'm going to continue. Hope you guys are seeing. Everybody seeing well? I hope you're enjoying this experience with me, because I really most definitely am sharing my little uh, my morning with you. So this is so much fun for me. Okay, come again. Take that hair out. Move it, see how it starts popping and bouncing all around. Come again, switch it to the sides. There we go. Last section. Put this clip here so it won't bother me. What do I have to do now? Over direct it where? Where do I want to over direct the hair? To the previous section that I cut. So, make sure you gather it all together. Come in my three sections. One, two, three. There we go. Shake it up a bit. See all that poppiness that's coming out? Love this. I want to see the chat. The chat's lit. Okay. So, there we go. Release the sides. Shake it a bit. See how it's coming out? Would I do this in curl? Uh, would I modify it to curl clients? Yes, you can. Like I always love to say, you guys are the artists. So you guys have to actually see um, where you can and cannot cut. What tools are you going to use? Um, and what tools are perfect for a curly client cut? This one, as you can see, it still has like its bounce and its wave and its curls. So you have to understand when you go or probably when the technique that i'm elevating and i'm using the razor is it actually do you want to go in so deep or you want to go probably less at the uh, more closer to the ends that will depend on the volume that you want to create or actually what do you want to do with the cut what is your end result what are you seeing or what do you want to create that will determine what what would be perfect for the cut in in this section I'm just going to pretend she has a very curly hair. And uh, as you can see, I'm elevating it. And if it's curly, I won't go in too close. I will go a little bit at more closer to the ends to create that looseness and that um, curl pattern will look more fun. So I'm go I will go more closer to the end. I would make it more, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more extra sections, as you could say. Let me repeat that this in this section for you guys. I elevate it, as you can see, and if it's curls, I just go closer to the ends. You saw that effect, the hair flying, that looked cool. So there we go, see all the texture that's popping up? I love this shag cut. It's a different technique. Everybody has their own techniques to do it, and everybody has their own style and method of working it with it. But it's very important you find your own ways. We're just giving you tools to make you a better hairdresser. It says, would you start the texture? Would you what? Would you start 
the texture and fine hair. That, like I always say, yes, you may, but at the end of the day, it's your end result. What are you trying to achieve with your client? I want you guys always to have clear. We might all, all, all the time give you guidelines to design, but you have to understand to adapt it to the hair that you're working with. Everybody has different hair textures. Everybody has different types of hair. The, 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 what makes you awesome or what make you a great hairdresser is the fact that you will be trying to find and how do you adjust it to your client that's in your chair. I think that would be the most awesome way to put it, I think in words, and how you work behind the chair. So I will, just to make it equal, I will do it on the, on the opposite side. So if, like I mentioned, if she had a curled hair, I would not go from, I would start probably working from mid lengths outwards, depending on the density. It means I go, I can make a little bit more of strands that uh, will create more of that looseness, but make sure, okay, one more tip, and I'm just gonna add this up with it. Okay, I'm gonna comb it upwards. Let's just say it's curled. I'm not gonna stretch it, the hair fully, if it's curled, right? I'm gonna, well, after I pull the hair, when it's stretched, if this was curled hair, I would push it back. Because you know what, guys? When you're cutting curled hair, this is something that's very important. When you cut straight hair, you cut it here and the hair will automatically fall. It won't move. But when you're cutting it and the hair is straight outward, but the hair is curled, the hair will have its natural bend, right? So you have to cut it where that natural bend is because when you let it go, the hair will be with that natural bend. It won't be fully straight. And the question, can you show how you incorporate a curtain bang into your shag? Sure, I'll work with that in a minute. Okay, so I stretch it out. If this was curled hair, I push it back. And there's these wave patterns. So you're going to cut it along those wave patterns. Follow the wave. If you were a surfer, follow the wave. Now style it. Make it fall. See all that texture that's popping out? You guys loving the, the, the cut? Loving what we're doing? Okay. Somebody asked me a good question. It's not part of the cut, but I want to keep I want to keep you guys, you know, on your toes. So one of the things I like to incorporate um, in in our curtain bag is if it was I thought the question was was it in curled hair? How do you incorporate a curtain bag to, into your shank? Okay, there are different ways to incorporate. I thought it was curled. Sorry. So and when you want to incorporate the curtain bag, you have to be aware of two things: density. And if you want that looseness and flowiness at the end, that means if she has a lot of, if she doesn't have a lot of hair, she has a person with that that has very fine hair. What you're gonna do is, let me moisten this. If you guys ain't using this and this is an station, you're missing a good cutting lotion. So I'm gonna just moist it a bit as I've been cutting. So the one united, from Rectin is one of my favorite products to work with. It's very lightweight. I could use it in all types of textures. So this is awesome. So I would divide it. I would make a triangle section in the front. Let me comb this out of the way. Let me put one of, of my Sambia dry clips just to keep the hair what I am not working. I'm not cutting. Just keeping it out of the way. Sorry, I'm going in front of the mannequin. Okay. So, this is what we'll be doing. We're going to divide. If she has fine hair, you're going to divide her straight in the center. You're going to over direct the hair right across. Right across her face, over her eyes. And we're going to cut it in this position right here. As you can see, I'm point cutting with my Sam Viga 7-inch dry cutting shear. Classic design. I love this shear so much. And I release it. 
like I cut a strong one in the front. So then I come across the opposite side. And let's say she has a little bit more of density. This side, I cut it across the face. So because she had fine hair, I want to maintain her length, but I wanted to have that looseness in the bottom. But if she has a little bit more of a thick, uh, thicker hair, more density, I'm going to elevate it at 45 degrees. Let me adjust this because I think I'm by myself. I'm going to over direct it to the center, 45 degrees. And I'm going to point cut or I'm going to slice. And there we go. The same result. The same result on opposite sides. It just depends on what is the density. My suggestion to you guys, if it's very dense, go across the face to maintain that length and that width. If she has a lot of hair, over direct to the center and cut in a 45 degree angle. Okay. So I, somebody asked me prior if I wanted, let me let this go right here. If I wanted to create volume on the top, I showed this before, but I'm going to repeat it again. I'm going to make a square. I'm going to make a square section, try to make it very clean for you guys so you guys can see it. There we go. We're making a square section right here. Let me lower this a bit for you guys so you guys can see it better. There we go. So when you elevate the hair, right, you're going to elevate it and you're going to back comb. That means you're going to start. It's kind of damp, so it won't work that perfect, but we got a little cushion there. So I'm going to back home the more I back home, the better. So you see, I'm pushing long strands and making a cushion. There we go. So whew. every time I do this a lot, even in the salon, and I do it often, and I still get that heebie-jeebies when I do it. So after I back home it and I make that cushion very strong, I'm just going to, there we go, that fast. So when you untangle the hair and you start releasing the shorter hairs are going to make those long hairs pop and you see all that texture coming in see all that popping up there we go Now, one thing I love, let me elevate this again. Wait, it here. Elevate it back. See, she's back. So, one thing is I really enjoy is using my clients using their natural texture. So, one thing I really started discovering in, in sharing with my young clients that they just really want to have something that's very quick and go, but a cut that will work for her is actually working with um, my diffuser. So like Sam says a lot, products are not an option, they're a necessity. So what do we do is just mist it a bit with One United. We miss that bit so the hair would be moist. We're taking, as you can see right here, let me see if you guys can see, Shape Force. You're not going to take a lot of this product. You're just going to take some, some of this um, flexible wax, close it in, put it in your finger, rub it, and you're going to start scrunching the hair. Scrunching the hair to where you want it to be. So I'm just pushing it upward, scrunching, scrunching. Take my diffuser, the hottest heat, but in the medium temperature. Okay, wait, something went wrong here. Okay, this is something that I really find entertaining. 
when you don't plug your blood drive, <laughs> it's never going to start. Let me plug this right here, but I'm sorry, guys. There we go. Now we're back to it. Okay, so you're going to put it in the highest heat, but in the medium temperature. So that's high. This is the medium temperature. So you're just going to start making the hair dry up, making it start up right there. With the backwards. You have to guys try to find new tools, new ways to work. And if you started to work with new tools, and I just found like using a diffuser, it's been a lifesaver. I think Lindsay Olson has shown a lot of techniques working with the blow dry, uh, with the diffuser and the blow dry. As you can see, I'm just like letting that natural texture pop on it. How do you guys feel in the cut? Let me see it in the chat. Are you guys feeling it? Who's going to do it tomorrow? Or who's going to do it today? Hit it at the top. Like the texture that's coming out? Let me see if you scroll the chat box. So as I keep blow drying it, just giving that texture. It's something that's very fast. Products are not an option, like Sam says, they're a necessity. They help you finish the design that you're working with. There we go. In her face a bit. Flip to this side. As you see, I bent my comb, giving a little heat to it with the diffuser. With the diffuser. I got this trick to share with you guys. I'm sorry. After you let it go, see how it flips out that curtain bang? There we go. Do the same thing on the opposite side. Sorry, turn the blow dryer too fast. Have the comb, flip it back, hold it right there for a second. Let that heat come in. Make that right there. Put that heat in there to the to the comb. The client won't feel it too much in her face. Because the diffuser, what it's doing, is actually spreading away the the blow dryer and just giving it a, a, a mist of hair, but it's even though it's warm. There you go. You can also style it and finish it with your comb, or you could also use probably a brush. And just play with the texture. Okay, guys, we're almost done. We're almost set. What do you guys think of this? Are you feeling it? Are you loving it? I just want to make sure that you guys have a fun time during this hour. I hope you like it. And if you get to do the cut, please tag me. Please, please, can you tag me? to your photo when you put it on Instagram. I want to see what you guys are working on. And I really, really want to enjoy and share with you and connect to us. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it would be at Jorge Does Hair. So I can share with you, we can connect. Any questions that you may have with this cut or any other cut, I'm happy to share a little chit chat with you. So this is my end result here. You guys feeling it? I love it, Jorge. Thank you so much for sharing this. Yeah, you know, I just like to share with a little bit what we do here. Yeah. And, you know, I think we in San Vila culture is just sharing our knowledge to make hairdressers be great. Yeah. You know, and love and embrace their 
the culture. Absolutely. I was taking notes myself. I loved how approachable you made this. There's like a million and one ways to cut a shag. And that yep. stationary guide right in the center was so uh, just it was a great blueprint. That is so easy and quick. So thank you so much, you guys. If you missed any of this, go back and watch it. Uh, there's so many nuggets and tips and tricks that Jorge left for us. So thank you so much. Follow Jorge and Jorge does hair on Instagram and take care. I'm sure you'll post a finished photo on your Instagram as well, right? Yes, I will. I'll, um, I'll finish it up, give it a little tweaks and tweaks and post a picture in a couple, in a few minutes. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget tomorrow, one of my good friends, Carla, is going to be here showing a lot of love. Please follow her also in her Instagram. And don't miss one of our exciting class. Thank you guys so much. A lot of love. See you in the next one.